Welcome back to Inside Hollywood. Today we will discuss the red flags Judge Faith Jenkins ignored about Kenny Lattimore. Being a television star and Kenny Lattimore's wife, Judge Faith Jenkins has gotten used to her new life. Even though we love both of them immensely, this was one pairing we weren't expecting. Several aspects of their relationship raised warning flags for us, even though we adore them both individually. On April 10, 1970, Kenneth Lattimore was born in Washington, D.C. He had an incredible experience at the age of five. In his episode of Unsung, he claimed that the occurrence caused him to despise males for several years and caused him to jump whenever anyone touched him. Kenny claimed in an open letter for the website that the incident caused him to withdraw inside of himself and left him so shy he could hardly communicate with anyone. In his adolescent years, he eventually claimed that God had stepped in and forced him to hug everyone. Little did I know, he said, that this straightforward act would start to tear down some of the physical boundaries I had erected during my life. Even so, he felt guilt for a long time, making him feel unworthy of dating. He buried the truth for many years because he was unsure how his partners would respond. He eventually concluded that it was time to move past the past and resume his life. Shant Moore, a singer, was the first person he met in 2001. After a five-hour initial chat, Kenny claimed he knew she was the one. After six months of dating, they got married. In addition to committing to Shante, he also promised to be a stepfather to Sophia, the daughter of her former marriage to Kadeem Hardison. Together, they worked on music, and in 2003, they had their son Kenny Jr. Kenny's childhood memories surfaced after the birth of their son. He described himself as extraordinarily vigilant and said preserving his son's innocence was his most significant concern in an interview with Essence magazine in 2007. Shantae filed for divorce in January 2011 because she was sick of having a male in the house. When he said on the Tom Joyner morning show that individuals get into relationships and believe they have all they need but may not and may not have addressed their issues and who they are, Kenny held her responsible for the breakdown of their marriage. Shantae claimed on R&B Divasla two years later that Kenny had served her with papers granting her full custody of their baby. During the Wendy Williams-hosted episode of the program Reunion, Wendy brought up a rumor regarding Kenny's sexual orientation. Kenny stated on the Singer's Room website that Shantae's response was reckless and irresponsible after learning about the incident. But Shantae wasn't finished. In a subsequent interview with Juicy, she was questioned about Kenny's sexual orientation. This time, she claimed that she was unaware of his prior circumstances. She continued by saying that he was no longer my spouse. Because that's his life, I'll let him decide. From that point on, Kenny's personal life came under increasing public scrutiny. Even Shantae's R.B. Divas co-star Lil Mo commented on the allegations in an interview with the Jasmine brand. More people started asking Faith why she didn't have a man when she was searching for a compatible mate in New York. Faith stated to Essence magazine that the scrutiny led her to start relationships with the wrong men because of all the pressure from people eager for her to be married. After yet another breakup, she decided to stand back and compile a list of the 50 attributes she was looking for in a companion. She established specific guidelines for herself as well. She contacted her friend and gospel producer Aaron Lindsay six months later to see if he knew anyone who could assist her in recording some Christmas music. Kenny was Aaron's friend's recommendation, and he stated that Faith and Kenny might make an excellent match. When Faith saw Kenny in person for lunch, she observed that his attire was flawlessly cut and that his smile made the entire space happier. Aaron had arranged for Faith and Kenny to meet. She needed to know if they shared many interests, though. Since Faith wasn't overtly flirting with Kenny at first, he didn't first perceive any sparks between them. Religion was also at risk because she was jobless and unsure of Kenny's reaction to her being between jobs, but after a two-hour talk, she realized he was unique. Kenny was generous, modest, considerate, and sincere. When she was with him, she felt serene and at peace. Kenny was attempting to block out the conversation about his choice at this stage in their relationship, and Faith was still under pressure to find a spouse despite being a prominent lady in her 40s. Can you see where this is going? They started dating and immediately established specific ground rules. They decided that intimacy could wait until after they became husband and wife because they knew they would eventually get married. 
According to a study on my Well Clinic website, couples who wait until marriage report much better communication and higher relationship satisfaction than couples who don't, and waiting paid off for Faith and Kenny. Without being influenced by their opinions, they got to know one another. When marriage came up more seriously, Kenny kept his word to associate with those who would support their union exclusively. They had a community of quotation relationship board of directors, according to Faith's book. She and Kenny made sure that everyone they turned to for counsel and encouragement was weighed and dedicated to seeing Kitty and Faith through to the end. Their mutual friend and matchmaker Aaron Lindsay and his wife Adrian were two persons they inducted into their inner circle. They also relied on Devin Franklin's and his then-wife Megan Good's counsel. Faith claimed in her book that Devin was the ideal resource because of his honesty. She also appreciated his and Megan's God-fearing union. Faith and Kenny wanted Devin to officiate their upcoming wedding because they considered him a blessing. Pre-engagement therapy was a topic Faith brought up to Kenny, who thought it was a terrific idea. After realizing they were a good match and his appreciation for Faith's tolerance of his past, Kenny was prepared to consummate their union. Kenny proposed to Faith in September 2019 when they were strolling through Central Park, and she accepted his proposal. They announced the news on Instagram, where Kenny posted that Faith was the complete package. A resource that Kenny and Faith used was the 2017 book The Weight, co-authored by Devin and Megan, for which he also expressed gratitude. In the book The, the Weight, Devin and Megan discuss how delaying intercourse until after getting married may improve any relationship. Stevie Wonder, Cheryl Lee Ralph, and MC Light were among the 300 guests Kenny and Faith invited as they began organizing their wedding. They got married in March 2020 as the epidemic was spreading devastation on the planet, with Devin officiating the ceremony at a chapel in downtown Los Angeles. On a Wendy Williams talk show, she announced their marriage. She used the pause to spread misinformation about Kenny's sexual orientation. Faith finally secured a position as the new divorce court judge in August 2020. Based on her personal experiences and the cases she handled on the TV court show, she also started writing her relationship book. We noticed other warning signs as soon as the book was published in November 2021. Faith decided to give dating advice to the Globe like she was some love expert after only one and a half years of marriage to Kenny. Devin claimed that Faith's knowledge and insight would inspire everyone never to accept anything less than what they are capable of. Kenny was promoting his eighth studio album, Here to Stay, while Faith was promoting her book. Faith inspired his new music, he claimed in an interview with CBN News. They tried to surround themselves with the best models of love, but when Devin and Megan filed for divorce in December 2021 after nine years of marriage, their inner circle confidence started to fall apart. In divorce court in 2022, Star Jones took Faith's place. As of the time of this video, Jones serves as executive producer and host of the Oxygen series Lethal Relationship. Faith, 44, and Kenny, 52, announced they were expecting their first child in August 2022. Guys, that's all for today. If you want to see similar videos, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Press the bell icon so that you can catch all upcoming videos.